everybody, it's Kelly from SVG Sews. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, this is going to be part one of designing a stitchery in Silhouette Studio. And the featured designer is Rivka Wilkins. She has some wonderful designs out on the Silhouette store and also some other sites. So check my blog post for a link out to her site. So uh, keep watching and we'll learn how to design a stitchery. It's Kelly from SVG Sews, and today um, it is the day before New Year's Eve, <laughs> and I am in the mood to stitch some snowmen. So I came out here to the Silhouette Design Store, and I found some really cute ones. Um, I own it, I own it, I own it. <laughs> but when I was doing this, I noticed that the designer, her name is Rivka Wilkins, and I thought, you know what? I really like her stuff, because when I came into my, um, my own... Um, you know, library of designs. <laughs> I'm like, I know that name. <laughs> so if you go into your uh, library and you do a search on Rivka um, or a search on the designer, you, all the things that you own by that designer will come up. And lo and behold, I already had a bunch of her files. So I really, really like her as a designer. Um, and so I thought, yep, this would be perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab these snowmen and I whip them into my cart. And then lo and behold, when I come back out here to, sh to shoot, start shooting the video, I see she's got a snowman card that have all of them. So that's going in my cart. <laughs> but uh, so what I do is I, I look and I see um, basically my design process is I come in here and we'll take the um, we'll take Rivka out of the the search situation here and then I just put in snowman and lo and behold you get lots and lots and lots of different possibilities for uh, what you want to do so if you're thinking of doing more a traditional applique then you'd look more towards um, this type of a situation because I'm doing stitching these um, sketch pen files work perfect and so um, that's the route I'm going to take but I'm also going to convert some of the scarves into a wool so I'm going to be using the freezer paper method so so let me just kind of bring you through my whole design process once I find the images that I like um, I get them into my library I purchase them and then get them into my library and then I just get a big enough canvas at first I thought oh I'm just going to do a 12 by 16 you know something relatively small and then as I started working with the images, I got bigger. <laughs> so I now have an 18 by 24 inch wall hanging quilts going here. Um, I also brought in some snowflakes, but really let's just start out with a, a blank document. I'm gonna grab all of these snowmen. Oh, let's actually just grab a new, and I'll show you how they come in. So when I come in here and I wanna bring in each of these snowmen, I just double click in and you'll get this uh, file. So she's got um, an outline file and also the actual uh, sketch file. So we don't need the outline file. We just need this guy. And it's now all ungrouped. So I'm actually going to right click and group that so it's all together. So then I went through the process and I did that with each one of the different snowmen and they come in right around this size with each other. And then I just start to play. Um, she also has a font in the design store called Winter Wonderland. And so I purchased that also. Um, it's a very pretty font. Let me get you back into my other file. And so this is what that font looks like. But I wanted to show you some tips about this too. So really at the end of the day, guys, what you want to do is you want to just start drawing out blocks. So um, as I got each of the snowmen into the file, I thought, okay, I know I want to have some taller blocks with the taller snowmen. And this guy, I think he's my favorite of the whole bunch. And so he's going to be the main star. And then when I got him to a size I liked, I figured out, okay, I need a 10 by 10 finished block for that. And that will fit on my 12 by 12 inch mat, no problem. All of these now will fit on a 12 by 12 inch mat. So when I go to break this apart to actually, you know, get it ready to stitch and get it ready and, and processed with my silhouette, that's what I need to do. But um, I also brought in some snowflakes that I had in my library, and I'm going to do these in um, glitter heat transfer vinyl. So you'll see they're actually floating over the blocks, and I like that look. So what I'll end up doing is I'll sew the whole wall hanging together once I have it all stitched, and then I'll bring in my glitter um, heat transfer vinyl snowflakes and put them where I, I want to see them. Okay. All right, so uh, one tip I do want to show you about is this Winter Wonderland. So let's go back into my new file here. This Winter Wonderland font from Rivka. 
So I've got Winter Wonderland typed out, and then I'm going to select it all, and then I'm going to come up here into the text style. Let's just start typing in Winter Wonderland, and then that looks good. Um, I'm just going to leave it as the size of text, and then I want to select it, and then I'm going to convert it to a path. And now I want to actually ungroup because I want these to be closer together. So I just want to kind of work with this a little bit. So I want to, I've got all of mine uh, selected. Now if I come to modify, I can hit weld and then that will make it all one piece. And then here also I want to weld. Okay, so now I can kind of work with these and those are going to ungroup. So I want to group these together so I don't get them screwed up. And same with these, I want to group that together. Okay. So let me zoom in here a little bit because I want to show you if you were going to stitch this as a stitchery, depending on how large you make it, some of these shapes within the, the text may be a little bit challenging. See how close the lines are together on the E? So I wanted to show you how you can um, modify an existing font to kind of make it more stitchery friendly. So I'm going to release my compound path and then I want to ungroup Okay, so now what ends up happening is I have access to these littler shapes, so I can kind of just scooch them a bit. Now it is affecting how the font looks a little bit, um, making it a little bit thicker, but that's okay because like I say, I'm gonna be stitching this, and so I want my stitching to show up nicely. Now this is a little skinny right here, but I'm not gonna be too worried about that. Um, if I needed to, I could come up with one single line of stitch and come up because with using that blue line eraser pen when I go to mark my pattern, um, th those marking lines will be gone once I, you know, add some water to my project. So that's all I'm doing here. And then so I would do the same with here and I would ungroup. I need to ungroup again, or release my compound path. There we go. And then I would just adjust these little shapes just to give myself a little bit more breathing room so my stitching will fit. And once I do that, I bring my W down here a little bit. If you want to make your W really big or have it be a different font, this is when you can make those design choices. All right, so let's go ahead and make these back together and make a compound path. Okay. Good. So this is when um, I'm, I'm, I like how that looks. So then that's when I brought it into my design and I decided, okay, I'm going to have a, uh, a three by 10 inch block here with just the text. And I filled it in with some black so you guys could see it clearly. So now my whole, now I'm liking this design. I'll probably end up, you know, adding a, a, a small border to the outside or maybe a nice, um, Oh, just a nice binding that uh, will accent and make this stand out. So right now at this point, I just want to get my blocks ready so I can sit down and stitch. So that's what I would do next is I would go ahead and um, come back here into this new file that I started. And let's just get back out to the full page so I can show you what to do. And I would save this. I save this to my library as my design file. So I literally saved it as Rivka Wilkins Winter Wonderland Design. Um, into my library, okay? So now what I want to do though is I want to go ahead and get my different blocks set up so I can get them marked and ready to actually stitch. So I'm copying the snowman and the block. I'm not worried about marking for the snowflake. Um, I don't need to have that marked, that's fine. I can eyeball that once I go to actually put the whole wall hanging together. And I would just come here to my untitled and then I'm gonna want to change my page setting sizes to be my normal 12 by 12 and command V paste okay there we go so excuse my dog barking <laughs> okay so this is at this point where we want to use offset where we want to actually get um, our cut line this is our sew line uh, that we have here and if you wanted to guys you could make this a dash line uh, so you know that that's your sew line um, but what I want to do is also do um, I can do an offset or very quite easily I can do a command um, C or command or a control C control V and I'm gonna just go into scale this is um, and I know I need it to be 10.5 by 10.5 apply and I'll make that a solid line so I know it's my cut line 
I'm going to select these two and I'm going to go over here to align and I want to center and align middle. And so now I know those are perfectly aligned uh, for that. And um, I like where my snowman is. He's still, um, and if you want to make sure that everything is looking good, you can just align everything to the center and there we go. We're ready to go. But I also want to convert um, his scarf to not be a stitchery, but to actually be wool. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and release my compound path. Oh, it's not going to let me. Really? Come on. There we go. Okay. So you want to ungroup. And so what's going to end up happening is I don't need all of these details that she's drawn in because I'm not going to sketch those out. I'm actually going to only sketch out, oops, this um, scarf. So let's actually move that scarf just out of the way a bit. And then we're going to get rid of all of the little sketchiness of this. There we go. Okay, because I'm going to handle his fringe of his scarf with actually do a fringe stitch with my embroidery floss. Okay, and so I know this is my, there we go. Okay, it does need to be lined up exactly perfectly, but yep, that looks pretty good. So, and it looks like maybe his little line of his head just got kind of moved a little bit. So I'll just scoot that down. All right, that all looks really good. So I'm gonna have his scarf. And at this point, you could also make his hat also wool. And I think I will do that. So let's go ahead and we'll get rid of those little lines. And I'm going to leave his pom-pom there. But the hat and the scarf I know now are going to be, make sure I've got rid of all my little markings. That looks good. So I'm going to actually take a copy and, and then I'm just going to select shift select so I get both. And I'm going to do a command or control C. Control commands V to get a copy. And I'm going to slide those off to the side because I'm going to actually have freezer paper for these to cut out my pieces of wool felt for that part. But I do want to mark where they go, okay? Now, the, the but, um, his little buttons, the coal pieces, because it's meant to be a sketch file, it's going to draw those in with your pen. And because I know it's going to be uh, stitching for me, um, I know I'm not going to want that much of a sketchiness to it, so I'm going to delete those. Actually, it looks like it's several layers. But then I'll bring in my circle tool, and I'll just put in some circles to mark where I want to put. So you can just you can tailor designs how you want them. And let's just adjust these a little bit. So we're still going with um, the intention of her design, but we're just making it a little bit more stitchery friendly. And there we go. So now I'm ready to mark these all as a, being a right file. The eyes, I'm not so worried about. I could just make some simple circles in there for right now. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. And I don't know why my dog is just a barky barky dog today. I don't know why he's doing it. Okay, so we're just going to make a little circle again for his little eyes. Those will probably be French knots. And there we go. So we've made that just a little bit simpler so that we can sketch out the design and that will be good. Okay, so what I want to do then is I want to select all of these and then I'm going to come over to, at this point, if you wanted to make the line, you know, the line style this and then 1.0. So everything, and then the color is being all black, so it looks good. Okay, so now I'm ready to send it to my silhouette. And so um, I've these things are not being written, but it looks like everything looks good. So I'm gonna make sure everything's selected and I want it to be cut so it's all red. So that looks good. And then I would come down to my, oh, my material uh, or freezer paper marking settings that I have that I use with my machine. Um, and the blue line erase marker. And it's a speed of five. Um, technically it's sketch pen, but it's really my blue line eraser pen with the pen holder and thickness of 20. 
and then I would go ahead and um, get my fabric and send this to my machine. And that's the process I would do for each one of these blocks. Um, and so if I go back here to the original design, some of these could all, probably all three of these designs could get put out onto just one uh, 12 by 12 piece of fabric. Um, you'd have to play with it. I think we can get at least a couple on each piece of fabric and then just trim them down to size once we're ready to set. So if you wanted to do different tones, maybe you wanted to do cream background versus a white background um, and just maybe get just some kind of warmth into the back, that would be uh, look very, very good too. So that's when you can make these um, decisions, these design decisions. So, okay guys, that concludes part one of this design, a stitchery and silhouette studio tutorial. Next week, I'll have the completed design for you. So you can see um, if you want to follow along and design your own stitchery, go out and check out Rivka Wilkins, her designs out on Silhouette Store. And again, svgsos.com for all those links. And I'm at Kelly Stola on Instagram.